Hey, it's Hunter here with HP Tech. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a toolbox tour, show you my setup, show you what I'm working with, and show you that you don't need to spend a ton of money to be a good mechanic. Let's dive in. Here's the top drawer. That's where I keep all my sockets, ratchets, extensions, torques, torque sticks, inverted torques, Allens, specialty sockets, adapters. Got quite a bit of Pittsburgh in here, some Carlisle stuff some clutch some few few fancy tools got some snap-on quarter inch drive extensions a cornwell flex head ratchet some bostitch sockets that came in a set years ago that i just haven't felt the need to replace so that's my main drawer second drawer down is where i keep all of my wrenches I have a lot of gear wrenches for the ratcheting wrenches i go from 3 8 all the way up to one inch 8 to 18 in metric some nice big wrenches have some gear wrench non ratcheting 8 through 22 keep some standard stubbies my line wrenches in a nice pile back there some distributor wrenches a couple of random blue point ratcheting wrenches and then my favorite wrenches would be these platinum wrenches uh, offset which is really nice for getting onto some bolts and that's my wrench drawer. Next drawer is a lot of miscellaneous. Have a nice set of Carlisle screwdrivers, panel popper. Another one of my favorite tools is these Nipex 10 inch high leverage cutters. A um, couple pairs of needle nose. Also my Mac tools vice grips. They were at one point uh, Stan or Irwin, but Mac warranties them and gives you Mac ones. Uh, three sets of channel locks. C-clamp for doing disc brakes when the tool won't fit in there. A couple of big crescent wrenches, pipe wrench, serpentine belt tool. Keep some Allens in here. Pocket screwdriver, feeler gauges, tape, battery, step bits, uh, wrenches for to air tools, tread depth finder, gotta have. Um, here's my chisels, cold chisels, punches mirrors, um, scraper, razor blades and a knife, a battery terminal cleaner, um, attachments for my serpentine belt tool, Lyle uh, fuel line disconnects, excellent, and then some picks. And then on to the next one. Having here, um, this is from Harbor Freight. I love this set. I've had great luck with it. It's a wheel lock tool kit. I've only ran into a few that this doesn't cover other than your weird Volkswagen ones. Axle nut sockets also from Harbor Freight. Had to get a tor uh, impact driver that is Carlisle because Harbor Freight ones kept breaking. Uh, snap ring pliers, some glues and RTVs, thread locker, a bunch of random sanding discs and zip ties and pens. Big old Pittsburgh pry bar that I love. I got, I think it was like 13 bucks pickle fork really cheap pry bars from menards which really suck don't buy them they bend they're not worth anything um this mac anti-vibe is an incredible hammer never have any issues with it and i beat the snot out of it rubber mallet uh seal uh, axles or tool that's about it for that drawer then we get into some of my cases big old drill bit set from harbor freight it's been all right I've broken quite a few bits in it, but the whole kit was like 40 bucks, 50 bucks. So I don't feel so bad about breaking bits. Go buy another one when I need it. Now from Harbor Freight, I'm really, really impressed with these. I have metric and standard uh, tap and die sets. I think they were $90 a piece and I've had nothing but luck with them. Really, really good quality. Um, the only thing it does not have is an M, I wanna say it's 12 by 125, which yeah, that's the one that's missing that I always seem to need, but eventually I'll probably find one. And that's the only other complaint is that these all fall out of it when you go to shut it. So good tools, cheap case. You shut it fast enough, they don't fall out. Standard sets, just the same. This was awesome. I found a couple of these at pawn shops. Excellent, excellent tools for the doing the 
rear disc brakes, the twist in style calipers. You can normally pick these up at pawn shops if you find them for like 30, 40 bucks. Um, I've been able to find myself one and my coworker one. I just, I kept the Matco one I have the vial one. Oh, another little brake for your tool. Another essential if you're gonna do any kind of electrical diagnostics or electrical work, power probe. I just have the power probe three or back probes leads. Have this Ames it's Harbor Freight. It's a uh, so it was like I think thirty or forty bucks. Works works well. Have the three twenty dollar a piece uh, Pittsburgh torque wrenches. I use them, but I don't trust them. Uh, if I have to do any kind of head bolts or anything that actually needs to be torqued. I'll go get a, my good micrometer torque wrench. And I also have my angle finder for when I'm doing um, head, head gaskets and such. A um, little non-contact pyrometer made by Ames. It's from Harbor Freight. Hasn't given me any issues. And then my bottom drawer. Some more cases. Now this is one of those things I had bought from Harbor Freight and it was junk, so I went with the Mac tools. Your power steering pulley puller tool. I've only used it one or two times since I've bought it, but Works great, lifetime warranty, obviously. Similarly, I had the Pittsburgh coolant pressure tester and it sucked. So I went and got this Mac one. Um, the Pittsburgh one, I had to pump it up like 9,000 times. Uh, this one, I don't. So the master fuel injection pressure tester, um, the gauge quality is really, really poor from Pittsburgh. So I do not recommend you buy it. Um, it has a lot of fittings and a lot of adapters, but um, my gauge quit working. Uh, maybe a month or two after I had it, so I've been meaning to go get it replaced or to get to upgrade to a, a Mac one. Just haven't gotten to it. Inner tie rod tool from Harbor Freight is fine. Quick Connect compression tester works good. The only com um, complaint I have is one of the the fitting for the most common spark plug thread doesn't like to thread in. Oil pressure tester kit I haven't really used. Slide hammer kit I haven't really used. And this I haven't really used, so I can't give you good reviews on them, but excuse me while I put these back in. Then over here is to my next favorite drawer, my air tools. Um, I have my Ingersoll Ram Titanium half inch drive, tons of power. I think I paid two sixty dollars for it on Amazon. I was able to pick up this 3 8 it's the quiet drive, Ingersoll Ram. Picked that up for 35 bucks at a pawn shop. Got the Blue Point Sander, got that for free from my dad. And now these are Harbor Freight Specials. Have my grinders, cut off wheel, and then my angle grinder. They work great for what they are. Also the blow off tools from Harbor Freight works great. Not OSHA approved, but it works just fine. I have this Cornwell 3 ace air ratchet and a Mac Tools uh, air hammer. Three and a half inch barrel air hammer. It's not the most powerful one in the world, but it gets the job done most of the time. Now we're gonna get into some miscellaneous drawers, have some well extractors, oil filter wrenches, have my two Lyle wheel stud pullers for putting new wheel studs. This is a must have from Blue Point for doing your disc brake calipers. It makes your life a lot easier. Having a racer wheel, that was kind of just for personal stuff. And in this drawer, more miscellaneous, I keep a bunch of relays and fuses. I've done a couple of fuse blocks and I make sure that I save everything I can. I have a wheel bolt pattern checker. It does uh, four, five, six, and eight lug wheels. Get them for like $10, $12 on eBay or Amazon. They work great and it covers a lot of patterns. I have my pitman arm puller, a couple of sets of safety glasses, some inside micrometers, hood prop from Lyle for all the wonderful vehicles that the hoods don't stay propped up on. Have this, this is for doing GM door springs when you have to do door pins. I have a couple of those. I keep a regular little meat thermometer for checking air conditioning. I have a Pittsburgh caliper and it works fine. And then here's my electrical drawer. Um, Harbor Freight heat gun, a little butane torch when I have to do some heat shrinking outside. I have a little 12 volt outlet tester. Crimpers from Matco that work great and then wire cutters from Harbor Freight. Uh, I keep a thing of heat shrink in here that I got off eBay. And then this is my little soldering kit that I've had kind of laying around for a while. Nothing fancy, but gets the job done. And then of course, the junk drawer with extra tools, parts, uh, just random stuff. Obviously, all have to have a junk drawer. 
Keep my little stool and a creeper, broom and a squeegee over here. Grease gun hangs there. My little UV light, I'm doing some air conditioning work right now. Um, nice little fan. Over here I keep a lot of random stuff, hardware and bolts, uh, banjo bolts coming out the Yahoo, copper washers, grease irks, and caps, and then just a bunch of random, random stuff in there. Um, then I have the side cabinet, which I was 200 bucks at Harbor Freight. I would have liked to have gotten one matching, but they didn't have any black ones. But in here I keep all my chemicals, uh, my battery cleaners, spray gasket, just random stuff, brake fluid, PB blaster, anti-seize, brake parts, lubricant, air, air tool oil, PB blaster, all that fun stuff. Some bag bomb, because in the winters, my hands start to crack. So that's a must have. I keep a couple of jugs of water fluid. We don't have any of the blue dye, so it's clear right now. Uh, spill proof funnel, excellent to have. Keep my welding helmet down there. Map gas torch, essential. And then I kind of have a few little fabrication stuff down there so my welder normally sits in here but that's at home then I just have a little side cart where i keep all my crap on it so this is my area i got my workbench over there with my vice i just wanted to make this video just to show you like i said a professional mechanic i've been at it for about eight years did the whole snap on thing you don't need to spend twenty five thousand dollars on tools to be able to make a living i provide for my wife and two kids on my single income you know i use a lot of cheaper tools, but they get the job done. You can definitely make a living uh, without breaking the bank. So if any of you are young mechanics or aspiring mechanics and you're thinking you need to go out and buy a bunch of Snap-on or Mac Co or Mac, uh, don't let them fool you. At the end of the day, all that matters is you can get the job done. 